Hey guys, Dr. Brandon Crawford here. I'm the founder of the Austin Center for Developing Minds. Uh, we are located just north of Austin, Texas in Cedar Park. And what we do is we focus on developmental functional neurology. Hopefully you'll have a chance to catch my lecture because I'm going to be taking you through what that process looks like and why it's so important to focus on rehabbing the brain in the right way uh, at the right time with the right frequency and oscillations and all this kind of stuff, right? So I'm very honored to be a part of this conference. Uh, this conference is very meaningful. I love all the people involved and obviously the cause is fantastic. So thank you again and I look forward to seeing you soon. At Cook Children's, we know if we work together, we can keep each other healthy. Wearing a mask keeps droplets from your nose and mouth trapped so you don't spread viruses to others. Wear a mask when you're going to be around people outside of your immediate family. Avoid large gatherings and wash your hands a lot. These simple steps can limit the spread of viruses. Let's all do our part to keep our community healthy. Hi everyone, my name is Brooke Arvik. I am an occupational therapist at Spiro Rehab in Austin, Texas. I chose to speak on a topic today that will give you all a better sense of the foundational values that our therapy team at Spiro focuses on in their sessions. Um, we do this with all neurological patients. Here at Spiro, we firmly believe that core stability has to be a fundamental focus in rehabilitation to gain more function and in turn, improve independence. It's a topic that I'm very passionate about and I look forward to sharing my perspective on rehabilitation with all of you, as well as introducing you all to the Spiro atmosphere. So first of all, I would just like to take a quick second to thank Rhonda and her team at Team Luke Cope for Minds for hosting this amazing virtual conference. Um, I'm sure that was no easy feat, but I cannot thank you guys enough um, for a much needed service for families and professionals, especially during such a precarious time. Your therapy scholarship support for patients in need has been a wonderful resource for some of our patients at Spiro, and it has really made a difference in their lives. You guys really are doing amazing things over there, and we at Spiro are just so thankful to be a part of the process and able to do whatever we can to help. So here's to Team Luke, um, my first 2020 virtual conference, and hopefully an insightful presentation. Thank you so much all for attending, and before we get started, I would just like to take you on a quick tour of Spiro Rehab and show you some of the equipment that we will utilize during therapy. So this is our lobby area that is currently closed due to COVID-19, but typically would be open for any family members or patients to wait for their appointment. These are all of our therapy mats here. You can tell that we have the clean and dirty signs. Um, we have therapy techs who will help us clean these, and that just makes the process go a lot smoother as we're transitioning from patients. And here is our assistive technology lab. This here is a robotic arm system that will give biofeedback. It's called the Armeo. And basically, once someone is put in here with their arm, they can then play this game to work on increasing their motor control through the arm movements to catch all the balloons. So this is a pretty cool system. Lots of patients love things like this. Um, it really just provides an extra component of biofeedback for our team here at Spiro. Here um, are other assistive pieces of equipment such as like an adaptive keyboard for low vision, sip and puff for driving a wheelchair with your mouth. Um, we also have an eye gaze system here that would allow you to use a computer with your eyes. 
Um, we have ring doorbells that would allow you to answer the doorbell or the phone. Um, Alexa is also in here and can help out with anything. And we work with improvability to foster independence within everyone's homes um, so that your kids can do things like that on their own. Adaptive game controller here. So basically, if someone didn't have finger function for hitting all the buttons on a controller, they could use more of a gross grasp to hit these buttons um, or just one finger, per se, it's a lot easier to hit. And then of course we have the regular controllers here for anyone who wants to practice that. Um, this is a Kensington mouse for a computer. So basically this would allow someone who doesn't have quite as much dexterity to be able to use like a full fist and then they could just use their knuckles to hit buttons. Um, lots of diagnoses can use that, but it just tends to make um, people a little bit more independent within their houses. So other things in the assistive technology lab are, this is another biofeedback game called the Neofect. And then we have VR goggles here, two different pairs. Um, these have hand controls too. We use these a lot with kids when they're standing or walking to kind of challenge proprioception on a whole different level. Um, we're not using those due to COVID right now, but we will be get, getting back to that. These are blaze pods that can work on coordination and coordination speeds. So you can see the faster they go, the faster the lights will light up. Um, and we use those a lot. These can be used like in standing, sitting, however you please. We have a power tower here so that we can work on squats rowing, anything of that sort. Core sticks that provide some different exercises that can be used for upper body training, core balance, lower body flexibility, and those are resisted. So over here, you can just pull up on a wheelchair or you can be standing while you complete these. Parallel bars. This is a tricycle that can be used for someone who is transitioning to riding a regular bicycle. We use these in therapy sessions a lot and for like adaptive sports days. Our wonderful newbies here. This is a tilt table. So as a child is transitioning into standing, if they haven't been standing for a while, it's really important that you kind of monitor how quickly they go up into standing. So this device will allow the table to come up vertically to only a certain amount of degrees and then you can slowly progress. Um, and so this is a tool that we use a lot with both adults and kids. Here we have our locomat, which you will see in later videos, but this is a robotic gate system. Um, it can do all of the work or it can do none of the work. Um, if you don't use the robotic legs for ambulation, you can just use the body weight support for treadmill training over ground. So we choose to do that a lot as well. Over here we have an elliptical, um, mostly for our adult population, but occasionally sometimes we'll do some high level balance with some pediatrics on there. This is a VitaGlide. So this device, you can actually pull, roll right up into in a chair or stand um, and work on propulsion with your arm to simulate pushing a chair. The resistance can be set from anywhere to, from one to 10 and you can do timed interval training. New step here, side fit, both basically just steppers that can be used with your arms and your legs. This here is an arm bike. There are also pedals that can be used for a lower extremity bike. Here we have a balance board. So you can use this in standing or sitting to work on high level balance activities.
trampoline with weighted balls to work on rebound coordination, high level jumping, anything of the sort. This here is our hippotherapy simulator. So the pelvis gait of a horse has been directly shown to mimic the same pelvic rotations that a human has during the gait cycle. So this has been a very effective intervention when working with neurological patients of any sort um, in order to increase core stability and kind of promote those normal pelvic movements. see that in action there. This is a great tool. It's always amazing to me how upright people's posture get when using this device. This is our community gym area. So all of these pull-in spots are wheelchair accessible but can be used for able-bodied as well um, we have like lap pull down machine chest press rowing machine you can work on shoulder extension so several options there treadmill a scale for anyone with a power wheelchair or manual wheelchair these two devices here are two hand cycles. So for someone who is not able to use their legs to use a bike, there are options out there, including hand cycles. These two options are very reclined options. It's hard to tell because they're, they're you know up and down, but basically it takes the trunk out of the equation because you'll have a strap around your stomach and then you just need the arm movement to then propel as you're biking. Another option, if you're not able to do that, is a more upright option. Um, this will challenge your core more, but it's still just an arm cycle, so you can use your legs um, just on the foot plates. You don't have to actually use those for promotion. It will just be the arms, um, and you're in more of an upright position, which a lot of people like for any sort of biking. We have a vibrating plate here. So this is a great device um, for high level balance activities, increasing proprioception, increasing sensation, um, really just lots of activities that, you know, maybe we don't think of in daily life, but to be able to give input to your kids in their lower extremities where maybe they're not getting input all the time. So we use that quite a bit. Thayer bands and weights, which are a part of our community gym program rickshaw which is also a part of our community gym program here we have two rt300s so these are functional electrical stimulation units that will stimulate the muscle groups needed for either lower extremity propulsion of a bike or upper extremity propulsion of a bike it is able to do six channels per side so total of 12 channels 12 muscle groups Whenever you're stimulating that many muscles, they're going to fire in the correct sequence um, that you would need to be able to advance the bike. And so this device can be used for community gym and, or in sessions. Pediatrics, we do have pediatric legs and the pediatrics can always use the arm cycle. So it's a great option for getting some neuro retraining and just starting to normalize those pathways. So that is Spiro, and here in a minute, I will introduce you guys to the team. All right, everyone. So now that you've seen Spiro and you've seen some of the equipment, let's get started. Um, I want to quickly cover some terminology that I will use throughout this presentation. Throughout the presentation, you'll likely hear me use the word core stability a lot. Um, so what is the core? By many people's definition, the core starts at the hips or pelvis and ends at the chest area or the thoracic spine. My definition of the core tends to be a bit more broad. So when you hear me speak about the core, I'm really defining this as more proximal support that starts at the pelvis or hips and ends at the head or the cervical spine. 
there are many reasons for me using a more encompassing definition of the, the term, but my primary reason is that I've changed my mindset in this area is because of the control and strength that is required from the head and the cervical spine to function. For instance, in a patient that has hypertonic muscles in their abdomen, but really has no muscle tone in their head or cervical region, we kind of see a different thing happen. Uh, they still can't sit up or function in space because they have no head control. On the opposite end of the spectrum, when you have a patient who has hypotonicity or low tone in the abdomen region, but has good muscle control of their cervical spine and their head, they may still have difficulty functioning in space, but they can learn techniques using their head to compensate for this weakness. You'll frequently see this sort of compensation in patients with spinal cord injuries, but it can directly translate to kiddos with low tone in the abdomen as well. So I think that's why my definition tends to be a little bit more broader um, regarding core. Now, when I say stability, what I really mean is the core's ability to move in both a static and a dynamic plane with no loss of balance, good safety, and then no need for external supports or assistance from another person. I'm a firm believer that everything starts with the alignment of the core. And if the muscles cannot align, then in therapy, we should either be focused on assisting the patient with alignment using external supports or strengthening the muscles that should be doing the supporting. External supports can often include appropriate seating. You're gonna see this to the picture to the left. Standing frame supports, which you'll see in the middle or hand supports from a therapist, which you see in the picture on the right side. You can see on the picture in the left that the foam wedge supports were used to push the spine forward and align it over the hips. This will allow for upright posture while completing the bicycling activity. The benefits of training in the correct upright position are so important for neurological patients and true neuroplasticity. In the middle picture, you will notice that the patient's hips are supported by the frame to prevent them from leaning too forward or to the left or the right. The trunk is then supported upright by the chest plate, moving its position to over the hips and not forward. Finally, although it is not the core, the legs are supported in a more neutral position by adding support in between the knees to prevent them from coming together while standing. In the last picture to the right, the therapist is using her hands to stabilize the hips while high kneeling to prevent the pelvis and spine from coming out of alignment so that the exercise can be practiced in midline while using a more neutral and natural movement pattern. This is a video of Charlie completing squats while high kneeling with a little bit of help for her right hip to maintain neutral core stability. Can you tell Charlie loves completing spots? <laughs> when the muscles can align, it is important to focus on strengthening the muscles required to maintain that alignment in space. Here is a video of a patient working to increase his strength for head control and thoracic extension to allow for increased use of head during functional activities. Since he started working on these exercises in his therapy sessions, he is already using his head to turn left and right more, which allows him to answer yes, no questions. Frequently, he's asked these questions at home or in therapy, which is a really big deal for someone who is normally non-communicative. It's a huge stepping stone. Some ways that we can address core stability and a more therapy friendly way are by making the activities more dynamic, increasing its play focus, or just challenging the client with a new activity that they've never really done before. This is a video of Charlie using our hippotherapy simulator and the newbie device to work on core stability. You can see the newbie being placed on her trunk extensors to allow for improved recruitment of muscles for upright posture and strengthening along the spine. As I increase the intensity of the electrical stimulation, okay. you can notice her about how her back starts straightening up, even Tell though it makes her lean back. electricity, Charlie. Starting to feel it now. 
We're gonna go up until we get to that. Five out of 10. Okay, show them that posture now. Get up tall over your hips. Ooh, girl. She is then able to engage her abdomen at the same time, allowing for a more upright posture over her hips. Charlie's hips are now moving in a figure eight position. That is the same movements that a horse's pelvis makes while walking. This is important because research has found that a pelvic motion on a horse while walking is very similar to that of a human's pelvis during gait. One research article conducted in 2019 reported that interventions based on hippotherapy simulators have a positive effect on postural control, balance, and subjects with cerebral palsy. Another article published in 2012 found that hippotherapy when applied with a simulator for hippotherapy for 15 minutes once a week helps improving sitting balance in children with cerebral palsy and that this effect is better in people with higher levels of disability. Another article published in 2010 discussed the importance of using hippotherapy simulators for clinical treatment of children with CP to improve their quality of life based on the technique considered to be more recreational, especially when fear or difficulty of mounting a horse, climate, or fi other financial considerations are taken into account. This also might allow the patient to complete an intervention that they normally would not be able to complete. Nonetheless, we think it's a great intervention and the kiddos really seem to enjoy it. This video shows another intervention that we frequently use in various body positions. This is the VitaGlide that you saw earlier in the tour of the facility. Charlie is demonstrating this exercise being completed with her arms while seated in an upright position. This is a great way for us to challenge Charlie's upright postural endurance while using her arms for a more dynamic activity. However, we frequently use this device with children standing or high kneeling to challenge balance and core as well. It can also be used with arms locked out and back muscles completing the exercise as well, which also will increase the challenge to the core during the exercise. Another intervention we frequently use is our virtual reality goggles to challenge balance and proprioception in alternative body positions. When a patient remains seated for a majority of their day, challenging their balance in new positions can be very difficult for them, but also very rewarding. I think in this video she's dancing here, but other activities that can be completed with these goggles are boxing, walking simulation, running simulations, coordination activities for the arms, fishing, and the list goes on and on. I mean, it can do so much. <laughs> It's a really cool tool that we have available for use to keep therapy interesting and fun for the kiddos. Some of the less fun interventions include good old balancing while using your arms and challenging the core. We like the original stuff here at Spiro too. Charlie always works really hard during our ses sessions and this continues to get easier and easier for her to complete. By having her reach forward and backwards, we are challenging her reach, but we are also challenging weight shifting from side to side, which is required during gait and core rotation, which is also being challenged. Um, and that's also required for gait and dynamic balance. Research conducted on stroke patients in 2013 found evidence that a core stabilization program changed gait patterns. Gait parameters in the core stabilization exercise group showed significantly increased gait velocity or speed. Although this research was conducted on stroke patients, the deficits that they have are frequently very similar to many other neurological diagnoses, making the statistic and research very relevant for others as well. 
Here you'll see a video of Charlie getting up and walking in the locomat. We love using the locomat as a tool and we try to always follow it up by overground training after the intervention so that clients can feel what typical gait feels like in a robotic system, but then they can also feel what that feels like after when their body is doing the work. Walk in a relaxed way. Turn it on in three, two, one. Max effort. Go, girl. Using the calibration, actual body weight support measures, and other progress charts, we are able to track Charlie's progress from session to session and over time. And although use of the locomat improves gait all on its own, I do believe that implementing core stabilization exercises into Charlie's other programming has also tremendously impacted her gait. Check out this calibration showing both legs in the top of the green, suggesting maximal activation during the gait cycle. Go Charlie. Another research article conducted in 2020 found that rehabilitation training of core muscle stability can effectively improve the balance function and walking speed of patients, probably by increasing the thickness of the transverse abdominis muscle. You can see this patient here working hard on increasing balance and gait speeds in the locomat. If you notice the number to the bottom left hand corner as well, that's kind of going up from like five to 10. That's a biofeedback score and that tells us how much work this patient is doing. Going for gold today, baby, going for gold. But really what it all boils down to for us at Spiro is focusing on these fundamental skills to allow for real recovery and true functional independence. These interventions allow our patients to do more at home and improve their quality of life no matter what that looks like. For one, it might be communicating more. For another, getting around the house independently or even playing adaptive sports. Whatever your loved one's goals are, we want to help them get there. Check out these patients and their functional progress. This is the stuff that we really love.
Spiro has a lot of values that we hold dear, including the name of the clinic, which actually means hope. But for me, number one value is always going to be core. Let's be honest, it really encompasses all the rest anyways. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And again, big thanks to Team Luke Hope for Minds for allowing Spiro to present and be represented at the 2020 Making Connections virtual conference. If you guys have some more time, stick around and meet the Spiro family so you can get to know all the faces of the team. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ashley. I just started at Spiro. I work the front desk. And whenever you're ready to get your kids signed up, give me a call. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ivana Cavazos and I recently graduated from the University of Texas at Austin with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Kinesiology and Health. I started at Sparrow as a volunteer and I automatically fell in love with the atmosphere. I work as a physical therapy technician and enjoy assisting the pediatric patients during their rehab sessions. Hi, my name is Charles. I'm a gym technician here at Sparrow Rehab. I came to Spiro Rehab after graduating from Texas State University. I like to implement core exercises into training regiments. Hi, I'm Lauren Elizondo. I'm a physical therapist here at Spiro. I've been with Spiro now for four years. Um, I've been a physical therapist for the past 11 years, mostly in an outpatient neuro rehab setting, um, but also spent some time doing inpatient rehab and pediatric home health. Um, here at Spiro, we love doing things to really challenge the core, but also making it fun, especially in our pediatric clients, um, doing things that involve different sports or different games, or um, we have also have a virtual reality headset that we'll use um, while we're working on sitting balance um, or standing balance um, to help try to engage the core and make it more fun. Uh, we also have a set of blaze pods that light up and flash and make it more interactive to, to work on some of the core strengthening activities that we do. Um, thank you. Hey, my name is Alex Leonard. I am a PTA here at Spear Rehab and would love to work with all your kiddos here. I have a passion for working with uh, pediatrics and brain injuries in general, so it would be a great opportunity for us. Hi guys, my name is Stephanie Williams and I am a physical therapist at Spear Rehab. I am new to the family, but it is already really apparent that everyone on the team here really just cares about getting these kids better and stronger. Um, and it's apparent in everything that they do. And I'm really just so happy to be here. Hi, my name is Heather Rennerfeld. I'm an occupational therapist here at Spear Rehab. Um, I've been a therapist for 11 years. I got my bachelor's degree from the University of Sioux Falls in Sioux Falls, South Dakota in exercise physiology. And I got my master's in occupational therapy from the University of South Dakota. Um, as far as core stability with the pediatric population, especially the neurodiagnoses, it's real, we do a lot of that kind of work here. Uh, working with them in different various body management positions, quadruped, sideline, um, different transitions, uneven transfers to get on and off the floor, in and out of their wheelchair. We've also started incorporating a lot of recreational activities, like cycling, kayaking, those kind of things. So with the pediatric population, instead of them having them just do standard exercises, it's kind of fun for them to be able to do activities that they see their peers doing. Again, like riding a bike or you know, being in a kayak or anything along those lines. Hi, my name is Brooke Arvig. I am an occupational therapist at Spiro Rehab. I have been working here for two years. Prior to working here, I worked at Mentis, which is an inpatient rehab for adults with traumatic brain injuries. Um, so that's really where my passion lies. The one thing I love about Spiro is that we get to work with adults and pediatrics and every day is filled with a new surprise. I, like most people here at the Spiro team, firmly believe that core stability is the most important thing you can do to improve function. You know, it all starts at the pelvis and leads all the way up to the head. And if you have control there, you're going to have improved function everywhere. Um, so, you know, here at Spiro, we kind of follow the mentality that if you want more, it all starts at the core.